welcome back to another episode of Together We Can. My name is Queenie, and um, you know what? Oh, I'm exhausted. I have no reason to be exhausted, but the only thing I can think of, it's been week nine, and it's been a whirlwind of happenings all around the world around us and we can't do anything about it and so I'm personally I'm having a tough time um, you know just with staying at home and you know being positive every single day it takes a toll on you I mean like it's not easy but at the same time it's not impossible and so I wanted to share this like this vulnerability with you guys because you know we watch all these positive videos and we never talk about how, how tough life can be um, especially as a child during this time especially as a parent during this time it is very very tough there's a lot of people out there that you know that don't have a means of help um, that can be given can be given to them can be offered to them and so my heart goes out to them and I wish I could do more than what I'm doing right now um, but at the same time we all have to practice uh, social distancing so what are our limits what can we do within our limits and so we gotta be creative sometimes you know um, to not get stuck in our routes and think oh I, I'm not allowed to do that and so therefore it's n there's you know there's no sense in doing so um, but what is something that we can do within our limits um, how do we overcome this hurdle, right? It's it's a day by day, and so today's um, activity is I'm hoping it will inspire you to make something tactile and beautiful. Um, this is a very simple rectangular shawl that I had purchased um, for like literally fourteen dollars at Forever Twenty One when it was existing, but it no longer exists. But when I found this for uh, fourteen dollars, I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is a steal. This is a buy steal. So um, it's a long three quarter length shawl, and um, there's only two holes to this piece where your arms go through and it just it falls in the middle and it falls right it drapes on your body and it feels beautiful and I can almost guarantee you if you make this for your mom or your auntie or your guardian who's taking care of you they would most love it um, and it's so easy to achieve um, and if you want to make one for yourself go right ahead I think like I think we can be like twinsies too right um, both your auntie or your um, the adult and yourself can be twinsies. How much fun that would be, right? So I'm gonna show you really simple, really quickly, verbally how verbally how um, easy it is to make a shawl, to turn a single piece of fabric into a shawl where it's wearable, where it drapes elegantly onto your body. And so all this one long, wide piece of fabric. That's what it is. That's all it is. It's a wide piece of fabric. So even if you have a twin sheet bed sheet that you sort of really love the pattern, you know what? And you no, no longer use it, you can use that as your material. Or if you have um, a scarf that you have lying around that is wide enough uh, where you can fold lengthwise in half and still look wide enough um, for you to wear as a shawl, then go ahead and use that scarf, right? Because the concept is really the same. No matter how, um, how long or wide your scarf is or your shawl is, the concept is the same. How you close it, all you're going to do is... This is the one end of the shawl, right? Remember, it's a really long scarf. A little opening at the top where your arm goes. And then just below where the opening is, is a running stitch to the um, opening end of the length, of the full length, right? So all you're gonna do is start from one corner all the way to the end, do a running stitch, stop, and then do another running stitch back to where you started and then you're gonna repeat that on the opposite end of the shawl okay so again opening end of this length and then we're gonna do a closing this is where the gap closes okay I'm gonna do a running stitch like so and then another running stitch backwards 
That's all the stitching that we're going to do. That's all the sewing we're going to do. After you're done cutting off the excess threads, you're going to put your arm into one end of your shawl and then flip it around you and then pull your other arm on the other end. Okay? So, and it falls just like so. So the middle of the length of the shawl falls on your neck. Just like so. You know, it falls on onto your shoulder and then it just drapes everything else drapes that's all it is and it's so perfect because it wraps you and you know it, g it gives you a little oomph to your outfit for the day and it's, it's super super cool in high school, first job in high school actually, and so it was at Bulk Barn actually, you know that candy store where it has all the candy in the whole wide world under one roof, and then all the nuts, all the spices, like even, yeah, all the goodies under one store called Bulk Barn, and I think there's a quite a, still quite a number of stores called Bulk Barn in Toronto, so check it out, um, but that was my first job is, I was that girl who cleaned the barrels, who the top of the plastic uh, barrels, I was the girl who cleaned and I was the girl who, you know, stood behind the cash and rung you guys up and when you guys bought like your candies, your bulk of candies, or gummy bears and cola cola candies. I was that girl to uh, ring these up and so that was my first job way um, as the bulk wine girl. I also knew I was the fashion girl. I wanted to go into fashion um, when I was a really, really young child, right? And so um, by because I had that goal in my mind, I wanted to work at retail stores to sort of just get that experience um, working in retail fashion. And so um, after Bug Boy for working for Bug Boy for a year and a half, I decided to, you know, try my hand and um, apply to retail stores. So I uh, applied and I got several offers and I started working at Smart Sets and then Pottery Barn. So those were all retail stores that I really liked loved and, and enjoyed working back when I was in high school because it gave you guys, it gave you a lot of perspective on how the industry um, works when you're outside that family, outside of school, outside of your family home. You start to be, become aware of what else is out there, what else is, what other opportunities are achievable for you. Um, and so by knowing what's out there and what's available, um, 
to allows you that opportunity to let you know what you want to do in the future. Like, what is your first job? It can be very simple. I mine was super simple. It's on the boat fine girl, right? So it doesn't have to be so extravagant. Um, just the fact of enjoying your first job is probably the joy of having it and you'll have many many jobs thereafter as well um, but you will always remember your first job and your second job maybe and so um, yeah it's just a topic for this week to talk about and so I hope I inspired you to continue to continue to make new things every single week and continue to you know um, have a structure in place within your family to talk about experiences because that's all we want is the more experiences that you build on, um, the more memories you create and the more positive memories that you create because, you know, not every day is a positive day um, and we get that and it, it shouldn't be a, every day shouldn't be a great day but if we have a positive mindset, if we end each day with a positive mood, no matter what, it helps the inner strength quite a bit. So that's my little secret to you. So, um, but, so that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Um, child, be amazing. Parents, be amazing. Because you know children are the path of the future. That's it, right? And so that's, and we're here to put that in stone for them. So again, have a great rest of the week. I'll see you next week. Bye now. Yeah.